Okay, we're rolling, right? <clears throat> All right, there is homework for next class. <clears throat> so you might want to jot this down. Your homework for next week is thus. <clears throat> I'll just say it slow so you can just write it down. I don't, I don't know how well my <laughs> sentence was, but anyway, it's long <laughs> as usual. All right, go through the life of Peter. Of course, this means in the Gospels <clears throat> or anywhere you can find that sort of thing. Go through the life of Peter in the Gospels or wherever you find it and find the seminal or primary events. I guess I could have just stuck with primary, couldn't I? The major events that happened to him that you think helped him form his view in 1 Peter? That you think helped him form his view that he wrote down in 1 Peter? All right. <clears throat> so, um, of course, be prepared to read your conclusions. <clears throat> All right, for this class, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to get into a... Um, a, uh, a major thrust. I, I kind of felt like the uh, salvation of the soul was a major thrust. I felt like it really could start opening doors for you to understand. <clears throat> um, um, but tonight we're going to get into pertaining to word themes, the biggest theme uh, that he uses in First Peter, which is suffering, right? <clears throat> suffering on some some level, mentioning it throughout the scriptures. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this. But I just thought that maybe it would be good for you to already be thinking about your homework <clears throat> while we do it, and go. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if this verse applies to something because. You already should sort of know the, the big moments, right, in Peter's life, you know, the big things. And um, not that we're, you know, I, I just thought it might be advantageous to <clears throat> start thinking about that um, because he uses the word suffering uh, in so many different ways uh, uh, as far as in sentences and whatever. <clears throat> and... Um, so let's just start with uh, chapter 1, 1 Peter 1. <clears throat> 1 Peter 1, 11, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. <clears throat> All right, so I want you to look at the word uh, sufferings there. <clears throat> and I want you to just try to start uh, uh, drawing some conclusions now. It's time we do that. It really is. This, is. this is the main word. And um, it's time <clears throat> that we start capturing that word and trying to get a grasp on what Peter's saying. So by literally reading each of the different ways that he said suffering or suffer <clears throat> um, from the scriptures where they're located, we're taking the time. Think about what it's saying and where that may point. Okay? All right. Let me read it again. 1 Peter 1.11, searching what or what manner of time <clears throat> the Spirit of Christ, notice it didn't say the Holy Spirit, right? You need to notice this stuff. You need to really tune in. <clears throat> the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. All right. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to just meditate 
<laughs> if you see anything, of course you should write down that reference, 1 Peter 1, 11. <clears throat> If you see anything, dash beside it. And just note, because you may be able to go back and look after we go through all of these and compare some of the things that you saw and go, hmm, this is starting to add up here. <clears throat> all right. First Peter um, chapter 4. And what we're doing right at this moment is we're just going through the word sufferings. It was used three times, sufferings with an S on the end of it. <clears throat> That's why we're jumping to the fourth chapter. We're only right at this moment going over the word sufferings with an S. Okay. Um, 1 Peter 4.13 But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers <clears throat> of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. I'll read it again. 1 <clears throat> Peter 4 13, but rejoice, okay, so if you, um, one of the things I probably would have put a dash and then noted <clears throat> was there's a, a, an overabundance of the use of the word joy or glad or that sort of thing in relationship to, in the same sentence, uh, using the word sufferings. <clears throat> but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. <clears throat> All right. 1 Peter 5, 1. This is the last one that's using the, the plural in reference to sufferings. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now isn't it interesting that it's building a case already, isn't it? I mean, it really is. <clears throat> it is, it's like, okay, verse, uh, uh, chapter 4, the verse we read there, and chapter 5 are, are close to mirror images of reality that he's putting down. All right. We're going to go to the, just the word suffering, and there's actually only one use of the word suffering singular and that's in 1 Peter 2.19 <clears throat> excuse me again for all of this Deb are you whistling at me? <laughs> alright 1 Peter 2.19 for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. <clears throat> First Peter 2.19, For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. <clears throat> okay, so the last one that we read... Uh, in 1 Peter 5, or 1 Peter, yeah, 5, 1. <clears throat> um, no, it was the fourth one. <clears throat> 1 Peter 4, 13 said, Rejoice, um, that you may be glad, also with exceeding joy. This verse says, Endure grief. <clears throat> Okay, so 
I guess the question is, are they all saying the same thing, but just bringing in different aspects? Or is there several different ways or uses he uses concerning suffering? This one over here, but there's also this. <clears throat> Those are things that you need to uh, start considering. All right. Now we're going to go to the word suffer. There's six of those, six different references. Yeah. All right, and that's singular, suffer. Anyway, 1 Peter 2.20 is the first one. <clears throat> for what glory is it if when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. <clears throat> now, I'll just tell you straight up, these verses are really just, it's just forming. I mean, if this was clay, this thing, these verses are starting to form something that's very clear in the mind of Peter when he wrote this. <clears throat> Okay, 1 Peter 2, 20 again. For what glory is it if when ye are buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently, but if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Give you a few minutes to jot stuff down if you need to. <clears throat> Okay, 1 Peter 3.14. 1 Peter 3.14 <clears throat> says this. But and if, um, <clears throat> this was uh, a scripture, um, some of you know Augie Zimmerman. We went to Bible school together and we also, his wife and my wife and his his. Uh, <clears throat> two kids went to the mission field together, flew on the same plane where I worked there for, you know, a couple of years and um, <clears throat> was my best friend probably in uh, Bible school. Um, and we had this little thing that we were always challenging one another to try to get one another to grow and know the word and stuff like that. <clears throat> Back then we didn't have a phone that had a concordance and all this stuff. You just kind of had to know the scriptures. And he said, he walked up to me one day and he said that we were there in Jamaica as missionaries. And he said, uh, where in the Bible does it say, but and if? <clears throat> and uh, many of them, I'm not bragging, but many of them I could pretty much instantly go but this one got me that's why I remember it so much it's like but and if and um, <clears throat> so of course the deal was that I couldn't give him one until I had solved his to me and it just kept us going and no, wanting to know the scriptures and it was kind of a fun thing to be doing for us and anyway <clears throat> this was it but and if you suffer for righteousness sake Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. <clears throat> All right. So, to me, the canvas is really being painted. It's really being painted in now. This is 1 Peter 3.14. Did I read it? Oh, let me read it a second time. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Okay? That was 1 Peter 3.14. Um, I will say to you that over the years and the places that I've been and the, the um, people from other countries that I've been with, <clears throat> I have heard... Um, a certain amount of stuff from certain people that just sort of said um, suffering is good for you. 
you know. And I never, I never liked that. I never, I, I always felt something is wrong just to say, well, you know, that's what they're talking about. And suffering's good for you, you know. It's good for the soul. I'm going, it ain't good for my soul. <laughs> my soul freaks out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I, that's the that's the stuff. You know, you you hear, <clears throat> and I can tell you that Peter's not on that vein at all, not even close. You know, uh, he's he is honed in like a like a sniper that's good that hits his mark every time, every time. All right. Uh, 1 Peter 3.17, so we're only talking three verses down from 3.14. <clears throat> For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Okay? But an if... For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Um, just, you know, while to some they could sound alike, just like this verse, they all are bringing out little pieces that the other one didn't add in. And it's trying to... And, and, Peter really is a builder. Man, he just worked at this and worked at it and stayed with it. And, and, and he adds in to, to bring us in the second go around or the third or the fourth. And he's, he's, he really, and if you pay attention, again, to his words, not just the definitions, but just what he's saying there, you'll go, the one word will jump out and you'll go, hmm. Wow, I've never heard that kind of used in this context, which would help us to jump out of our context, our, our mental understanding of all these things. <clears throat> and, uh, but you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. All right, so let me read that one more time. 1 Peter 3, 17, for it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. <clears throat> All right. Let's go to the next one. 1 Peter 4.15. <clears throat> but let, let none of us... Let none of you suffer as a murderer, which I heartily agree with, especially if you're thinking about murdering me. <laughs> but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer <clears throat> or as a busybody in other men's matters. And um, uh, can I give you another little clue that if you take it away from here, this class, uh, it will be... It, it could be very interesting. And that is the word, the meaning of his use of the word evildoer. Evildoer. It's, it is, you know, it's really an incredible word. If you just read it according to your understanding, according to basic Christian understanding, you'll go, Oh, well, evil, evil doers, and you go, well, that's not me. You know, and you'll go, um, uh, that's strictly people that do evil, right? That's what we would think. Hello. But he's got very different meaning. Very different. <clears throat> and then very specific. All right, one more time, First Peter 4, 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Okay, one verse after that is verse 16, 1 Peter 4, 16. <clears throat> Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, 
but let him glorify God on this behalf. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you another little secret, if you're ready for it. The use of the word Christian, the meaning of that isn't the basic idea you have of an American Christian. <laughs> okay? I'm just telling you, it's not, you know, we go there, we, we, we know Christianity, we know Christian, we know all this stuff, but we don't know Peter, <laughs> you know. Peter <clears throat> uses it, and, and see, the proof of that to me, because I had a hard time with it at first, y'all know that, right? I would do that. I had a hard time with it, and just looking at it and going over it. And I had to go over these, these, that, these cycles and realize what he was talking about. And I found it. I found it. And I found the, the very heart of the meaning that he's trying to get to by using that. <clears throat> All right. Um, did I read it twice? Nobody knows. All right. 1 Peter 4, 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God on this behalf. <clears throat> All right, and just a few verses down from that, 1 Peter 4, 19. And this is the last of the suffer verses, which were six. 1 Peter 4, 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. <laughs> God. You know, I love this book. I love this book. I love it. And I love that, that you're not going to get it if you're just a nominal Christian. You're not going to get it. You're too, you're too Christian, American Christian or whatever. You know, you're too whatever, too religious. You, he's not, you know. A, a pope hadn't showed up for hundreds of years after this, you know what I mean, stuff like that. He's, he just walked with Jesus, and then the Spirit came, and then he's going, oh, whoa. Okay, so it's really, really good stuff. <clears throat> All right, verse 19 again, 1 Peter 4, 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Have you heard the will of God up to this point? Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto, and here's the depth of it, as unto a faithful creator. <laughs> we go. You know, really, Peter, your relationship with God is still he's a, just a creator? You walked with his son. Ah, maybe there's more behind that word, too. There's more behind every word he uses. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to move to the word suffered, E-D, at the end, past tense. Okay, <clears throat> let's start with 1 Peter 2.21. 1 Peter 2.21. For even hereunto were you called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. I think that one's pretty much self explanatory. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, I'll read it again. 1 Peter 2.21, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, one, no, two verses from there. 1 Peter 2.23. Don't you like that some of these are real close together and together they could explain stuff? 
I like it. First Peter two twenty three. <clears throat> Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. All right? So, if, if you're really listening, I think you're, you can hear that there is a theme, even if you haven't got it all figured out yet. There is a theme, because he keeps using the same concepts. And that was the hard part for me until I saw the cycles, you know? And then I, then I began to realize he's, he's, he's circling back and he's explaining it again, but he's adding more. He's adding new things to it or he's trying to help us to get it. And sometimes he would use little versions and sometimes he would use vi big versions. But you can see we're, we're literally going through in hops the whole book and he's saying all the same stuff. So how hard could this be to get this? Well, we do need the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> all right. I uh, can't remember if I read it again. So here it is. First Peter 2.23. Who when was reviled, he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously and I do think you know it's really good to to try to find the elements that weren't in the other verses find that isolate it put parentheses around it or quotations or something and in doing that Add it to the bigger picture as you go. <clears throat> okay? First Peter three eighteen. First Peter three eighteen. For Christ also hath suffered, hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to give you another thing that will help you well how about this i'll give you another thing that will help you <clears throat> understand portions of first peter that seem really random this this that i'm going to give you is it'll help you to understand portions of first peter that, are there are there portions that seem a little random to you that was to me a lot of it I felt like it's like dude say something <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know and that is this verse right here uh, <clears throat> Christ also hath suffered for sins the just for the unjust the words particularly the words the just for the unjust keep that in mind when, when you, if you just sat down and you said, okay, I'm going to take a few minutes to read through 1 Peter and I'm going to keep in mind this little phrase, the just for the unjust. And it'll open up really some of this stuff that, that's like, why is this in here? Why are you jumping subjects? Why are you, and... And this will scream, he's not, he's not. <laughs> you know, he's talking about the just for the unjust. That wasn't much of a scream because of my throat. <clears> throat> 
All right, read it one more time. 1 Peter 3, 18, For Christ also hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Keep, keep going. Okay, uh, 1 Peter 4, 1. 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. <clears throat> And, you know, uh, that little bit there, he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that ought to bring up a big contradiction in your mind with Paul. This is Peter talking. And he's saying, if you suffer in the flesh, you've ceased from sin. And Paul says, he that is dead is freed from sin. They are talking about two different things. They are. See, you know how I know that this stuff comes up in you? Because it was coming up in me. And I was going, no, just suffering in the flesh doesn't cause me to cease from sin. What are you talking about? You need to talk to Paul, you know. <clears throat> no, I needed to talk to the Holy Spirit and let him explain it to me. Because he's right. He's right. But, but it's, he's not right in the same context. He's right in the context of what he's talking about, <clears throat> which is not the same thing <clears throat> that Paul was talking about in Romans 7 or 6. All right, one more time. First Peter 4, 1 Peter 4.1, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the... Uh, in the flesh, <clears throat> arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sins. <clears throat> now, one little thing that might also help you is just to take these scriptures, <clears throat> the ones we're reading tonight, only those, and read one after the other and see if there's any, any kind of a continuity. All right, for example, let me give you an example of that. <clears throat> uh, the scripture I read before this one was 1 Peter 3.18, right? Okay, I want to read 1 Peter 3.18 and then immediately go into 1 Peter 4.1. Do you understand what I'm doing? I'm going to read uh, chapter 3, verse 18, then I'm going to immediately read 1 Peter 4.1. <clears throat> Here we go. For Christ also hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Do you see how that almost sounds like they should have been written together? I mean, for as much as is like I'm, I'm summing this up. I'm summing up verse 18 of the last chapter. It's like he didn't say anything in between there, but he did. He said a lot. All right. <clears throat> Is this helping anybody? I'm telling you, there's seeds that I'm throwing out here, and seeds will get in you, and the Spirit of God will grab them and run with it. Okay, last one, 1 Peter 5.10. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, 
after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Okay. This, you could use this. <laughs> this could be good for you, okay? Uh, perfect, established, strengthened. Something needs to settle you. While you think about that, I'm going to take a drink. All right. Let me read it one more time. <clears throat> First Peter 5, 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us <clears throat> unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthen, settle you. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're done with that portion. <clears throat> there really is, folks, I'm telling you, there's really in the verses that we've covered here, there's, there's the answers. It just needs to be compared to the cycles that are around it, which these verses are kind of the, in a sense, the main theme of cycles throughout Okay, <clears throat> and, and add to it, be sure and look at definitions closely of what his definition is. Don't look it up in Webster's Dictionary, for God's sake. That's not what we're talking about. <clears throat> there wasn't a Webster's Dictionary when he wrote this. Okay. It was, uh, um, what was that guy? <laughs> what was it? No, it was Jettitude. <clears throat> yeah. You to see, it's hard to remember his name because he never got across the Jordan. <laughs> but he did write his own dictionary. <clears throat> and I, I recommend you don't use it, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, was it the last? week? Was it last class that we talked about the salvation of the soul? Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the redemption. About the redeeming of it. <clears throat> okay. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18. Let's go there. First Peter 1 18. And uh, what does, uh, let me just look real quick here. <clears throat> What's the word that he uses to begin the verse, First Peter 1.18? What is it? For as much. You ever heard that word before? This guy uses the same stuff over and over, but it has meaning. Okay, we're going to find that meaning. I'm going to make you see it if you're not going <laughs> to. To seek the Lord. <clears throat> For as much as ye know, don't you? That you were not redeemed with corruptible things. All right, all right, all right. Corruptible things. His, another theme that he sticks to. He knows what's incorruptible and he knows what will corrupt. Amen? He knows what will corrupt. <clears throat> Corrupt, corruptible things as silver and gold. Okay, so, of course, with our American understanding, we go, that's right, somebody can bring silver and gold to me and I won't be corrupted. <laughs> right? A lot of people think that. But he, he gives his meaning right after that, from your vain conversation or manner of life received by the tradition of your fathers. That was the redemption money. And he's saying, no, you ain't going to get the firstborn that way. 
And while he never uses the name firstborn, that's what he's talking about right here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, <clears throat> okay, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. Okay. Now, I want you to think about that little phrase for a minute. I mean, you've got to think about every phrase, every word with him. Just, I mean, it, it was driving me crazy. I'm just like, God, the Spirit broke through. Because, you know, you're just going, okay. Um, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. He could have just said, by the precious blood of Christ, this is typical Christian thinking I'm about to say, by the precious blood of Christ who died for us so that we'd be saved. But he doesn't do that. He goes, Christ as of a lamb, not Christ as of a prophet <clears throat> or a healer or a deliverer or a great teacher. It's almost like knowing the lamb is more important than that stuff. Like the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. We want you to know, this is what he's saying, I want you to know I was there and this is what this is about. And this is what he is about. And as he's writing, and this is what this letter I'm writing to you is about. Okay. <clears throat> Without blemish and spot. <clears throat> All right. What do we think when we read that? Eh, don't I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> it. It doesn't matter. Almost everything that we come up with is wrong, folks, because that's not what he's saying. And I'm sure that's what Paul said. You know, I think that we got that from Paul. But we're not talking to Paul. You know, that would be like that would be like you coming up to me and you start, you know, you start talking to me like I'm Jim. You know. And uh, you know, and I know that you really like, you know, coffee and I know that you're this and that and <clears throat> you know, I'm going, do you know who I am? <laughs> you know? This is Peter. Treat him with respect. He walked with the Lord. But greater than that, after all of the flash was gone, all of the, 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 the gospels were gone, after, you know, the early, I'm assuming after the early stuff of the whiz, bang, and fire of the book of Acts, because you don't see this in his, his speakings, his sermons, in there, he speaks more like, like, a, like Paul, but not with any depth at all. He he is worth reverencing as a man of God, not above the Lord or not above you know, but as a true true man of God, <clears throat> as of a lamb. So, all right. So in the first chapter, you have the heart of the man saying, we're going to talk about Christ as of a lamb. But not the Savior lamb. Or, or how shall I say that? Because yes. he, he does save your soul. But we're not talking about that because you're, you're would you agree that most Christians still need their soul saved? Yes. A lot? <laughs> On a regular basis? Yeah, I agree. All right, so uh, without blemish or without spot. So we, we go, okay, without blemish and without spot, without, you know. <laughs> we should have named our two dogs blemish and spot. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> here's spot, here's blemish. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, <laughs> but he's not talking about the blemish and spot that you're talking about, that you're thinking about. He's not, he's not, he's not. See, how about this? Will you all just all agree with me right now? Let's just agree that we want the Holy Spirit to just open our eyes to this book and to what Peter's trying to say. Would you all just agree with me? You know, let's just agree that we're going to, you know, we're going to quit trying to figure it out with our mind and twisting verses that we already know what they mean over here, but not, not in Peter. Just give it up. Because I did. <laughs> I just want, I can't get this. This is just mind-bending to me. And when I gave up, then the Holy Spirit said, hey, you want to talk? <laughs> I would like to. Goes, okay, let's, let's take a little journey. Okay. So, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, which is huge, who was? Christ as of the Lamb. Okay? But was manifest in these last times for you. Okay, now we go, yes, for me, for my salvation, so that I won't go and go to hell and, you know, <laughs> never mind. <clears throat> See, I, I still have some self-control. I don't say everything comes into my mind, most of it. But. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead. And gave him glory. By this lamb, they believe in what God is. And gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. <clears throat> Not just in the lamb. Your salvation, therefore your faith and hope, if it's about your salvation, are in Jesus. Right? Believe in the Lord. But we're not talking about that here. To get to this, you're going to have to believe in God. You <clears throat> say, so I believe in God. No, no, you don't. Not that, that way, you know. You believe in the supreme being. There's a supreme being. He's supreme, so don't mess with him. <clears throat> Seeing you have purified your souls. Ooh, baby, what were, what, were, what were we immediately talking about in verse 18? For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, redeemed... Um, uh, seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit and unfeigned love for the brethren of the brethren see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently okay so you know I, as usual i could almost read anything and then stop and if i stop just immediately say he's going to say that doesn't mean what i'm thinking it's saying and you'd be right that doesn't mean Let's just hug one another and let, you know, let's do the Christian thing. And, you know, we're all, we are all Christians and we, we, we just, you know, pal around and whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives continually and abides continually. All right. So... <clears throat> He uses that phrase, being born again. Dennis and I were talking about it at one juncture a couple of weeks ago. And being, it's not, you know, you, you were born again, you're being born again, and you shall be born again. You know, past, present, and future. This is talking about an ongoing thing that God wants to do in you. You say, what does that mean about my salvation? I don't know. Talk to Robert. <laughs> All right. We're almost done here. I want to read 1 Peter 4, starting with verse 12. <clears throat> Beloved. Now, what does that refer to? You should know this one. 
What? The firstborn. The firstborn is the beloved of God. You know, God said to Abraham, you know, take now thy son, thine only son, thy son whom thou lovest, the beloved son, Joseph, the beloved son, Jesus, this is my beloved son. And it meant this, when he, God said that to Jesus, when he began his ministry, it meant he's going to end by giving himself as a firstborn. <clears throat> beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So we're going, yes, in that day, I, you know, I'll be glad with exceeding joy when I'm, you know, in heaven and his glory and, you know, warm, fuzzy feelings for all. For all. No. He's talking about. Yeah, that's right. You got it. <clears throat> Verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you for the spirit of glory. For the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. <clears throat> okay. So, does anybody feel like you're inching closer to what we're going to get into? Probably next week. <clears throat> anybody feel? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Inching. Inching, yeah. Inching's good, though. You know, yeah. Well, and, and let me tell you, uh, let me reiterate something I told you at first. When I started this class, I was so nervous and worried <clears throat> that I would present it in a way that it would end up just being a whole hum thing to you uh, or something like that. Uh, and I was praying and been praying and I said, Lord, you've got to have me present this in a way that can set them up and and bring them actually to see it and go, my God, this is not what what we thought and uh, the other thing is oh my god Peter really does approach this from a different view and angle and and wow the whole letter you'll go wow that's what I want that's what I've wanted that's what I've been praying for that's so tedious or slow or or inching or anything less than that micro inching um, I believe that I've been following the Lord and I believe it's going to pay off okay and I want it to pay off for you and I want you to keep searching the scriptures though I want you to say Lord what is this Lord I would like to see this before Randy says it because then it's going to take away from my seeing of it I want yeah, that's the right thing to pray. It's, it's the right thing, you know. And, um, and I think based on past teaching and based on this and that, um, you have some idea, but it's the boundaries are, your boundaries are larger than the boundary of, of what he's trying to, his, his is very focused. And um, so... So don't give up because we're, we're getting close to, I mean, Lord willing, unless he says to do one more thing or whatever to help you, um, we will, uh, there, there's, there's two things about this. One is if, if you see it or if I tell you this is what it is and this is how you'll understand it by seeing it all throughout here. The second thing is, then we go through Peter, all of it. Maybe not in a row like Paul would do, but we go through Peter and we go through it until, until you can be able to go, this book has more Jesus and more Christ and him crucified in it from start to finish as a book 
than any book I've ever read. If you can believe that, of the things that he says here, it's like, I ain't got none of that in here hardly, you know? But that's, that was my conclusion. I went, I, when I got through, I just went, oh my God, I've never seen a book in the Bible that I would start reading and every word and everything said one thing, first of all, one thing, and second of all, from start to finish, it, it's like every word and every chapter and every sentence and all the phrases it's using has landed on this one thing. So that'll be exciting to see, won't it? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, and I just pray for <clears throat> all of those that are not here and for those that are here and those on Skype, Father, that your spirit, that your precious spirit, who we long to hear from him, Lord, and uh, Lord, I long for all of us to be able to hear it from you, from your heart, that will never take it away from them then. They will always know what this book is about. And I just pray for each one, Father. Keep their hunger up. Keep, keep their uh, anticipation up. Keep their excitement up to, I want to know you, Lord, and I want to know you in First Peter. Father, keep it up with, uh, with us. And then by your grace, allow me to release what you want that can begin to, the movement into the exact things, not veiled anymore. And Father, beyond what my words can pray or my knowledge can understand, I, I just ask to guide me, guide us, and let it bring glory to your Son. Let it bring extreme glory to your Son. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.